This year in May at Maritime Conference, we have what we call open space technology. And some people are smiling. I'm sure you've done that in business. Some people, business people have done that. And it helps to uh, bring forth ideas. So what happens, people uh, think about uh, things that they're passionate about, but maybe have never come to be. And of course, this was to do with the church. And so then they post these ideas all around the arena. In this case, it was in a big arena, and it was like probably four or 500 people there. So there were lots of ideas posted around, and then the rest of us were invited to go around and see there were probably 50 or 60 things posted, and to see what we might be interested in learning more about or being part of. So we went to these places, and one of them, there was a group of young ministers who got together, and their passion was around um, ministry for the millennials, for people ages 25 to 45, and what might ministry look like for that age? How might we attract that age into our churches or not? So... Uh, needless to say, I didn't go to that focus group. I didn't think I fit into that category. However, uh, the next day or later that evening, what happened was these young ministers, young people, came to me and asked me to be part of their group. And my first response was, well, what would you want an old broad like me involved in that for? Well, they were very persuasive, and I said, well, you need to tell me more what's on your mind, and they did, and so because I was so interested in what they were doing, I decided I would be part of it. So they have planned four worship events across the Maritimes, one in Moncton, one in Charlottetown, one in St. John's, St. John, and one in Halifax. And they'd done an online survey to determine what the needs were of this age group. So they um, did it online, of course, uh, for 200 people, church and non-church. And what these, the survey showed was among the top things that this age group was looking for to meet outside the traditional church setting to experience modern, progressive Christianity, worship, to feel a sense of community and belonging, and to eat together, all things dear to my heart. I've always maintained that we need to bring the church to the community instead of always expecting the community to come to us. Needless to say, however, I am very glad that community has come to us today, and so many of you have taken the time to be here today. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I met with five or six young men. The young women weren't available that day, and they just got the old woman. But anyway, we met in a pub downtown, down on Spring Garden Road, and we planned the first event for September the 23rd. It's a Friday evening. And it's going to be, I found out yesterday, it's going to be at, on the rooftop of the Seaport Market. So it's a pretty good uh, venue. We just hope there's no rain. <laughs> and uh, through um, social media and our new website, there's a website, the word is getting out and excitement is building. Now let me point out, obviously, this isn't just for 25 to 45 year olds. This is something new and exciting kind of geared for that, but I know all of you are young at heart. You're at Bedford United Church, and we're pretty open, a sense of community and inclusiveness, contemporary, progressive worship, all things that this is to be about too, because sadly, not all churches have this. So we're trying to reach out to everybody. So you're all invited. So mark your calendar September the 23rd. And it's, I think, probably going to be around 6 o'clock. And we're going to eat together. Then we're going to worship. We're going to have a social time. So it promises to be a great evening. So I want you to be a part of that. 
We've decided to name the community B. And when I heard that, because I didn't come up with the name, somebody, these other people did, and when they told me they were going to call it B, I thought, wow, I love it. I love it. And do you know why? Because there's so many things we can add to that B, right? Be open. Be inclusive. Be filled with the Spirit. Become all that we are called to be. Be still and know that I am God. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the latter two. I think becoming all that we are called to be is what the writer of 1 John was talking about in the reading that Darlene shared with us earlier. And in order to become all that we are called to be, we need to connect to the great divine source of all that is. The source of all love, the source of all life that we call God. As the writer says, see what love Abba God has lavished on us. And while we are already children of God, it has not yet been revealed to us what we are to become. In other words, we still need to mature in our faith and in love. We still have a way to go, folks, don't we? All of us. We need to continue to grow and evolve spiritually in order to be all that we are called to be as children of God. Last week, we heard the word lavish before. We talked about the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. And in the, that story, the father showed lavish love to his son that had returned. And he also showed lavish love as he let his son go to explore and to grow and evolve in his faith, in his understanding of what was right and what was wrong, and spiritual growth. That, of course, is a metaphor for God's love. We all know that about the prodigal son. But how do we connect to that love, especially when we're going through difficult times, especially when we're going through illness, when we're going through relationship issues, when we're grieving, grieving the loss of relationships, the loss of loved ones, when we're lonely or depressed, when we can't seem to find any joy in life anymore. Now, you may wonder why I had Darlene read for us a definition of a mystic. Well, the reason is mystics had it right, and we could learn a lot from what they have to tell us about connecting to and recognizing the oneness and wholeness of creation and about living with paradox and mystery. Because isn't that life? The yin and the yang, the good and the not so good, the good times, the bad times. In our tradition, we often hear, we don't often hear much about the mystics of old. Yet, historically, Christian mysticism has taught us that Christians, their major, the major emphasis of mysticism concerns spiritual transformation and the following of a path designed to produce more fully human beings, fully realized human beings, living up to our potential living in communion with God, with ourselves, with each other, and with all creation. We've been talking about that the past few weeks. For Christians, this human potential is realized most fully in Jesus, the one in whom God and God's love was most fully manifested, the one who is our example, our guide, our inspiration. One of the church fathers, Athanasius, 
put it this way. God became human so that humans might become God. So today, I invited some mystics of old and since to come share with us some words of wisdom. So first, we have Methchild of Magdala, Magdeburg. She was born in 1207. She's looking pretty good for her age. 1207 in Germany. She became a Roman Catholic nun, and she was a writer and a mystic. Meth child, what are some thoughts you'd like to share with us today? The day of my spiritual awakening was the day I saw and knew I saw all living things in God and God in all things. And the soul is made of love and must ever strive to return to love. Therefore, it can never find rest nor happiness in other things. It must lose itself in love. By its very nature, it must seek God in love. Thank you, Miss Child. Next, we have Meister Eckert, who I must say is a favorite of mine. <laughs> he was also born in Germany in 1260, and he became a philosopher, theologian, writer, and mystic. Meister, would you share with us uh, now some words of wisdom, please? Get my robe on. <laughs> in my opinion, wisdom consists in doing the next thing you have to do, doing it with it your whole heart and finding delight in doing it. Yet, one must not always think so much about what one should do, but rather what one should be. Our works do not ennoble us, but we must ennoble our works. You may have heard these before, but a long time ago, I also said, God is at home. We are in the far country. And if the only prayer you ever said was, thank you, that would be enough. Well, thank you seems inadequate, Meister, but thank you for these words of wisdom today. Our next guest was greatly influenced by Eckert, and he was born in England around 1300. He became a hermit who later was a religious writer and mystic. His name is Richard Roll. Welcome, Richard. Did you call me a hermit? I just, <laughs> well, like my, you, I just like my quiet time. You were a hermit. I just have one thing to share today, and that is for love is a willful stirring of our thoughts unto God, so that they receive nothing that is against the love of Jesus Christ, and therewith that it be lasting in sweetness of devotion, and that is the perfection of this life. For these wise words, thank you, Richard. By the way, you remind me of a chap I knew once. You wouldn't happen to know Nathan Wimberley, would you? <laughs> President of the Writers, Mystery Writers Fine. Guild? Fine. Yes inside joke from our dinner theater. Next, we have someone from Italy, Catherine of Siena, who was born in 1347. Catherine was a theologian and a philosopher. Welcome, Catherine. Once, when I was speaking of Jesus, I said, you see this gentle, loving word, born in a stable, while Mary was on a journey, to show you pilgrims 
how you should be constantly born anew in the stable of self-knowledge, where by grace you will find me born in your soul. You see, the soul is in God as God is in the soul, just as the fish is in the sea and the sea in the fish. Wonderful words, Catherine, especially for those of us living close to the sea and the coast here in Nova Scotia. May we also live close to God and in God. Another mystic that has joined us today, who has joined us, is Teresa of Avila, born in Spain in 1515. She became a Carmelita nun and has left us with many words of wisdom. We welcome you, Teresa, today and invite you to come forward and share with us some words of wisdom. I understand you're talking about being the best person you can be today. So, remember that you have only one soul, that you have only one death to die, that you have only one life, which is short and has to be lived by you alone. And there is only one glory, which is eternal. If you do this, there will be many things about which you care nothing. And to reach something good, it is very useful to have gone astray and thus acquire experience. Thank you, Teresa. I believe you also said, it is love alone that gives worth to all things. And as Christians, we know this to be true. Well, others continue to speak of God's love. And one such person is Evelyn Underhill, who was born in 1875 in England. She was a prolific writer, pacifist, and mystic closer to our time. So I invited her to speak today. Welcome, Evelyn. In keeping with what Teresa said, I believe it is those who have a deep and real inner life who are best able to deal with the irritating details of outer life. All things are perceived in the light of charity and hence under the aspect of beauty. For beauty is simply reality seen with the eyes of love. And finally, in keeping with the theme of today, I wrote, we mostly spend our lives conjugating three verbs. And I'll stray from the reading a minute to say conjugating means being involved in what's doing or being right now, what's yet to come, or what's already gone by and also who was the doer or the beer of it. So we spend most of our lives conjugating these three verbs, to want, to have, and to do, forgetting that none of these verbs have any ultimate significance, except so far as they are transcended by and included in the fundamental verb, to be. Evelyn, thank you for these words of truth that you've shared with us today and for being here. We so appreciate all of our mystics for being present and taking part this morning. We've come a long way since the lives of the mystics of the Middle Ages and even from the 1950s when these words that Evelyn just shared with us were written. Yet spiritually, there's still a yearning in us to mature in our faith and to draw closer to the divine. The time has come when we perhaps need mysticism, when we need to be reminded that the source of all said, be still and know that I am God. The time has come to reconnect and become aware of the oneness, our oneness with the planet, with the cosmos, 
with all creatures and with the Creator. As Jan Phillips, evolutionary artist, author, workshop director, and social activist from the state says, without this consciousness of connectedness, guiding and grounding us, the chances increase that we'll abuse the technology we've so brilliantly conceived and constructed. Speaking of technology, through the gift of technology today, we're also able to listen to Jan Phillips, whom I met in June at a seminar where she was one of the guest speakers at uh, the Atlantic Seminar in Theological Education, David, that you would have attended many times. Uh, she also wrote an Apostles' Creed about some of her books and her um, DVDs. And an Apostles' Creed is printed on your bulletin, on the insert in your bulletin today. And what I'm asking you to do is to take that home with you today, read through it, digest it, absorb it this week, and see if it might resonate with you. If it does, I'd like you to, next week I'll print it again, and maybe you'll be comfortable in us repeating, an, not the Apostles' Creed, an Apostles' Creed. Maybe we'll say it together next week. But for now, I'll let this modern-day mystic, Jan Phillips, have the final word as she shares her words of wisdom with us. And following the video that Paul's going to put on in a moment, I'd invite us to sit in silence for a moment. We don't often take time to be silent. And today, in the midst of summer, let us take a few moments of silence following the video to let Jan's words sink into our souls and into our hearts that we might be inspired this week. Paul? Think of yourself as a thought of the Infinite One, made flesh by your sheer desire to see and be seen. Think of yourself as nature, looking upon nature, in awe at its grandeur, in tears for its wounds, nature loving itself, healing itself, speaking out for itself. Think of yourself as a vessel of stardust and clay, a child of the cosmos, transforming energy into matter, wave into particle, mortal into immortal. Think of yourself as a soul who took on a body to be of use, to radiate love and receive it in return. Think of yourself as necessary, purposeful. Remember that you came here to light the world. Think of yourself as a shaman whose hands heal whatever they touch. As a storyteller whose words fall like rain on a drought-stricken land, whose stories are medicine, miracles, that heal the sick and raise the dead. Think of yourself as a circle holding yin and yang, as unity cradling the dualities in your arms. Think of yourself as a thought leaning toward radiance, an early dawn rising into daylight. Deep inside you, the fire of creation burns day and night. Atoms forged from the Big Bang spin and swirl in your blood and bones, your lungs and your legs. Like salt in the tear, joy in the laughter, the Holy One is in you, being scattered like seeds across the land as you speak and write and reach out to touch. You are the hands and feet, the eyes and ears of the Great Beloved. You are the one we are waiting for. 
Your stories are the ones we are waiting to hear. It is time now for each of us to speak, to say what happened and what we learned. To reveal ourselves is to heal ourselves, and to heal ourselves is to heal each other and the world entire. From our revelations of intimacy and truthfulness, vulnerability and generosity, the future takes shape and enters into us. Words made flesh, our thoughts made real. Yes, think of yourself as a creator, the peace you desire, the justice you cry out for. These will come as we speak them into being. As the cosmos is being created by the mind of the Infinite One, this world is being created by the mind of the Finite Ones, by us. Let us be mindful and full of care for the words we speak, the thoughts we think, the stories we tell, for these are the tools with which we build tomorrow. Jesus, draw me ever nearer as I labor through the storm. You have called me to this passage, and I'll follow, though I'm warm. May this journey bring a blessing. May I rise on wings of faith. And at the end of my assessing, with your likeness, let me wait. Jesus, guide me through the tempest. Keep my spirit stayed and sure. When the midnight meets the morning, let me love you. May this journey bring a blessing. May I rise on wings of faith. And at the end of my heart's testing, with your likeness, let me wait. treasures of the trial form within me as I go. And at the end of this long passage, let me leave them at your 
Beautiful. Thank you so much. Please join me in a uh, prayer of the community. For your endless love, for your healing hands, for your gift of peace, for your shining light, and for your gift of life, it's for these reasons we praise you. It's for these reasons we worship you. We thank you for all that you are and all that you have done. We praise you today in music, word, and deed. And as a community, to you, we bring our prayers and petitions. We pray for those who are lonely, who are shy and self-conscious, who find it hard to make friends, for those who are nervous and timid and depressed. May our church work to inspire confidence and ensure companionship. We pray for all in illness and in pain. We pray for those who are weary of the day and fearful of the night. Grant healing and peace, we pray. We pray for the United Church camps, Kidston and Berwick, as they are in the middle of their summer programming. May they continue to serve as a place of refuge and provide the campers with time of relaxation and moments with you through nature. We pray for the staff and volunteers as they make a difference in people's lives. We pray for our partners within this community, for Beacon House, the Gambia Association, Phoenix House, and Hope Cottage. Help us, we pray, to be continually mindful of these organizations and offer the support they need. Continue to use them to provide compassion to those who need it. We pray about the political unrest around the world. We think of the airstrike campaigns in Libya and the sieges in Beirut. We ask that you show a way for peace among humankind. We thank you for times of camaraderie and fun-filled competitions with the Olympics. We pray this can be a demonstration of love and support for the competitors and for their countries. We thank you for BUC's staff, leadership team, and many volunteers who devote many long hours every week to provide support to the church members and to this community, to bring aid, and to ultimately bring glory and honor to you. We join as one voice as we pray the contemporary prayer of Jesus as displayed on the screen. Compassionate spirit, source of life, mystery, love's kingdom come, and peace come in all of creation. May every life have daily bread and know that grace prevails as we forgive all that needs forgiving. Ground us in our times of trial and lead us on the right path. For with hope and with love, know the spirit will reign now and forever. Amen. So please uh, rise as you're able and join us in our closing song, How Great Thou Art. Oldie but a goodie.
Commissioning this morning comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, where he reminds us to go into the world and respond to encouragement, think in harmony, agree with one another, take care of creation, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you for sure. Amen.